Good morning or good afternoon to you, depending on your geographical location. It, it is very morning for me here in the U.S., where it is uh, 6 a.m. Chicago time. Um, I am pleased to be speaking to you today on our methods for accelerating competency acquisition for console operators, supervisors, and engineers. The methods represent an integration of two companies and two products. IFP training and RSI simulator. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me. I am the director of training services for RSI. I retired from BP after 30 years in downstream operations and operator training. I often say that I spent the first half of my career in operations and the second half of my career training operators in various capacities. I have spoken at numerous U.S. Gulf Coast and national conferences on the need for achieving competency assurance for console operators, uh, Address Competency Gaps in Console Operations is the title of an article um, of mine that was published in the November 2013 issue of Hydrocarbon Processing. And I hold a patent on a U.S. Uh, a US patent on a distillation technology. Uh, now allow me to share some statistics about IFP training. We have 1,200 customers located in 80 different countries. We offer 550 training courses in our catalog. We conduct over 1,300 training sessions every year with a team of 95 permanent trainers and a network of more than 600 lecturers, all with strong industrial experience. And we can customize any of our training courses to suit our clients' needs. So why should you want to accelerate competency acquisition? Well, I can give you many reasons, but I will limit them to these. Console operators unarguably occupy the most safety critical position in our facilities. Experienced operators are aging and retiring from the workforce. And younger, less experienced operators are moving into positions of responsibility too rapidly. And even though you may have a novice at the controls of your plant, you still want to maintain targeted production rates while maximizing safety. Uh, another fact of this workforce uh, is that console operators rarely have advanced training or degrees. So at the highest level, we want to achieve an overall improvement in human performance. So how do you accelerate competency acquisition? Well, using the sound pedagogical methods implemented in our training solutions, which shortens the length of training by customizing content and increases training efficiency, thereby decreasing your cost. So let's take a high-level view of our console operator training solutions. First, there is fundamentals training, equipment basics, if you will, fundamental knowledge that is common to virtually all processes. Then we have unit fundamentals training. This is basic training, but for a specific process. Uh, take a crude unit, for example. Crude units around the world are very similar in their function and operators must understand basic crude operations before they can be trained adequately on their specific unit. Unit specific process and optimization. And finally, we have advanced custom simulator training. So let's take a closer look at each category. Fundamentals training encompasses studies such as the fundamentals of applied chemical engineering, basic equipment technology and operation, fundamentals of instrumentation and process control, and of course, safety basics are integrated into all fundamental training courses. And all of these basic courses are enhanced with the inclusion of generic simulators. Unit fundamentals training focuses on the basic operation of a specific process 
or production platform. The technology is physical and chemical phenomena, parameter relationships, universal startup shutdown and normal operating principles. And students put these principles to practice on a unit standard simulator. Unit specific process in optimization. Here students learn the exact process they will control. Such things as equipment and control valve location, DCS navigation, troubleshooting, good practices, and unit optimization. Now, some of this unit specific training can be done on a simulator, for example, a troubleshooting. Uh, but for the most part, this can be conveyed in a classroom setting. Finally, the advanced training on a custom simulator. Here is where students develop the highest level of performance. They are applying all the knowledge acquired earlier to an exact replica of their actual unit. And here there are no negative process consequences for making mistakes. The student console operator may practice every procedure in every emergency until they get it right. They experience every possible operating condition, uh, some, that may only, some they may only encounter once or twice in a decade. They can practice all of their procedures, start up, shut down, emergency. Uh, and the simulator can be configured to keep track of the student's performance during um, these various scenarios. So let's review the key benefits of our training solutions. Our solutions focus early on basic training to begin important knowledge acquisition and increase operator confidence. Our methods develop your operation staff to improve teamwork and enable collaboration. We deliver custom training that develops deep understanding of the process so operators can synthesize their knowledge and experience when faced with new problems to troubleshoot. And in due course, operators can achieve technical mastering of their area of responsibility and achieve certification. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that investing in your council operators through us is a very smart investment. All right, just a quick review of the four primary training categories. There's fundamentals training, unit fundamentals training, unit specific process and optimization, and advanced custom simulator training. And why do we organize this way? Well, to accelerate competency acquisition with sound pedagogical methods implemented in our training solutions for the purpose of improving human performance. Now, I've spent this first portion of my talk essentially on acquiring knowledge. Now I want to talk briefly about accelerating experience with RSI simulators. So allow me to provide you with some statistics on RSI's Operator Training Simulators, or OTS. RSI has over 40 years of process simulation experience. We have successfully delivered over 2,000 models. We have the largest worldwide client base. We have a large staff of highly qualified modeling engineers located around the globe. And in just the last eight years, we have delivered over 300 OTS around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I want to illustrate the impact of integrating simulators with training. So moving up along the y-axis, we have competency and increasing. Moving to the right along the x-axis, we have time on the job or experience. Now that isn't necessarily one and the same thing, time on the job and experience, but I'll get into that uh, in a moment. So this curve represents the 
type of knowledge acquisition that occupies a large portion of the oil and gas industry. What I mean is that in the absence of formal training, operator performance, <coughs> excuse me, like wine, we hope, uh, improves with age. But I can tell you from decades of personal experience that operator performance does not necessarily improve with time. Uh, but for this discussion, we'll say in a best case scenario, uh, operators performance and competency will improve as they spend more time on the job. So here I'm, <clears throat> I'm inserting our training categories along the y-axis because they correlate to improved performance and competency development. Now, here are the different types of training simulators we would bring to bear to accompany or enhance the training. When we integrate simulators into the training, we change the shape of the competency curve. Not only does competency acquisition accelerate along the y-axis, but we achieve a high level of competency in a shorter period of time. So, where traditional console operator training requires a long time to achieve a moderate level of competency, a curriculum that integrates IFP training and RSI simulators achieves a higher level of competency in a much shorter time frame. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I will conclude my presentation at this time reviewing the qualities and capabilities IFP training and RSI brings to our clients. Technical and pedagogical excellence a wide range of technical programs, experienced trainers with strong industrial backgrounds, and world-class services with an interactive learning experience. Any questions? Uh, hello, Jamie, are you there? Yes, yes, George. Yeah, we have we have a couple of questions, but I'm just uh, trying to to organize it. Okay. And, and it's uh, yeah. Um. Oops, sorry. I'd like yeah. to bring my control panel back up. How do I do it? Let's see. Perfect. Okay. There we go. Okay, we have this this first question, and is uh, was coming from Middle East, and it's basically uh, they want to know if if IFP training and RSI uh, have been like having any experience uh, in training strategies to reduce uh, the generational gap within within a, a certain company or, well, of course, in the industry. Um, well. <coughs> Yes, reducing the generational gap. Um, well, in our view, the way to do that, uh, and, uh, as I have, uh, the way I describe simulator training, when it is combined with, with, um, with uh, classroom type training, is that uh, it is kind of like uh, being in a time machine, if you will. Um, in large, for most of my career, I did not have the benefits of a high fidelity simulator and had to rely on. Um, a lot of classroom training and on-the-job training. Um, but now that um, we have had experience integrating uh, both the generic simulators for equipment and the high-fidelity process simulators for unit-specific uh, performance improvement, we, can, we have a, a little bit of data that shows that um, operators who are trained on a, using a high-fidelity simulator um, can achieve performance levels equal to operators who have spent over 15 years on the job. And they can achieve that performance level in a matter of months. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me. So um, the integration of uh, IFP training and RSI simulators does accelerate that, uh, that generation. Okay. 
Okay. Um, we have uh, another question, and it's, uh, it's also coming from Middle East. Is there any 3D virtual reality incorporated uh, within RSI simulators? Um, well, the RSI simulator platform is, uh, is Indus, uh, and the newest one is Indus Plus. Those modeling platforms um, do not have 3D visualization, but um, another model, we have an office, uh, we, are, we have an office in Beijing, China, that is a, a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, RSI, and they have done 3D visualization training um, for quite some time now. And uh, in fact, there are plants, uh, even, even hotels uh, have used our, uh, our Beijing office for developing 3D visualization and sort of the, like the first person um, video game thing where you can walk through the plant in uh, in in a three D topographical uh, world. Okay, we have a third question and it's more regarding uh, emergency scenarios. Uh, well, first of all, they want to know if 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 you guys have within their simulators this feature regarding. Uh, well, accident or emergency scenario situations to be handled, and and also if the the platform itself allows, let's say, trainer a trainer in house to upload or to create this kind of uh, emergency scenarios. Uh, absolutely, we. Uh, <clears throat> it is perhaps the most. Um, it is perhaps the most uh, useful. Um, employment of these simulators, and that is to duplicate process emergencies. We've worked with, um, uh, with clients um, in, for example, the most, most recently we've had a client uh, with an H oil unit. It um, has fairly rapid dynamics uh, under very high pressures and very high temperatures, and uh, upset conditions on this process unit deteriorate extremely rapidly. And um, they have they have used our simulators to practice the various pump losses, pressure losses, all of the all of the um, possible unit shutdown scenarios uh, they've practiced on extensively. So yes, uh, the emergency emer practicing emergency procedures is one of the most critical things we can accomplish with a high fidelity simulator. Perfect. I well I hope it well is clear. Uh, they want to know also if, if how long will it take for, for the RSI well, standard uh, simulator models to, to become 3D? The length of time to, to build a 3D representation of a plant? Yeah. Is that the question? The development time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, If the, it is not, let me put it this way, it is not weeks and it is not a, a year. It is, it, the time frame will be months and it depends on the amount of data the client can provide us. Uh, if, the, if, the, if it is a new grassroots plant, oftentimes, many times now, plants are designed in 3D CAD and those 3D CAD versions of uh, or topography uh, images of the plant can be converted rather rapidly into um, a 3D simulation for training. If that is not done, there are techniques whereby the um, we we actually walk through the plant taking thousands of photographs <clears throat> and then um, merge those photographs into 3D into a 3D representation of the plant. So it's it's difficult to say put a, a, a definite time frame on it, but as I said, it, it is not weeks, it is not a year, it is in, it's months and it depends on how much data we can get from the client. Perfect. Um, so it depends of uh, what it says, like uh, you guys develop a 3D structure depending on the client and it takes months to be developed. Correct. Perfect. Um, and well, the last question, and is well, we have. This, this is not the last because I just received a, a new one. 
I'm gonna well just go uh, through this new one and it's, it says like this it says is the focus of training more on upstream midstream or downstream on the RSI simulators uh, it is it is everywhere <laughs> uh, we have we have built simulators uh, upstream downstream and in chemicals what was it what was the third category upstream downstream and midstream yeah upstream midstream, midstream yes. or we, downstream <clears throat> yes we have uh, our we have built simulators for production platforms for midstream for um, um, LNG processes for chemical processes uh, just about everything in the oil and gas industry perfect and now this is the real last question and is 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 from our side and it's been was related to 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 the panel session one of the panel sessions that we're going to be having in next month in the forum in Abu Dhabi um and well in your opinion george uh, how essential is uh, simulation and the developing of of, of simulation scenarios uh, uh, for training well uh, well i i believe it is it's absolutely necessary. I have been an advocate, uh, as I said in my bio. I've spent half of my career in BP training operators in various capacities. And what I know from decades of experience is that I have had operators who perhaps, let's just say, for example, um, good, competent operators who had very little startup and shutdown experience because the startups and the shutdowns occur four to five years apart and if they and it might have been that during the startup or shutdown they just simply weren't out on working the shift that day so it could be literally decades or longer a decade or longer before someone gets that one-time experience whereas what some of our our data has shown us is that we can take very young operators and bring them up to speed practicing startups and shutdowns uh, in in months where it has taken over a decade for someone else uh, uh, someone who has not had the benefit of a training simulator takes some a decade to get this training it takes a if we do when we do have high fidelity simulators it is a matter of just simply months before that uh, that novice console operator achieves the performance levels of a very experienced operator so I think I have been advocating for high fidelity simulators and a console operator training for uh, over a decade. I think it's critical.